name is Kutfred. I work as a tech part in the uh, um, very excited to uh, present something which I've been working on uh, for the past 3-4 months and a uh, big thank you for uh, the whole Couple uh, uh, Camp coding team for giving me an opportunity to present it. So, uh, uh, without further ado, let's uh, get started. And, uh, for this presentation, I've uh, made a few assumptions that uh, you'll be familiar with the basics of cloud. Um, have created few services in the public cloud uh, platform, uh, any of the AWS, uh, Azure, or uh, GCP. Um, you have uh, <coughs> experience writing automation scripts, and also have uh, installed Drupal on Kubernetes. So uh, we'll be covering um, IAC and its relevance. Uh, we also uh, dive into what's Terraforms and uh, various uh, components involved in Terraforms. A uh, few of the basic Terraform commands. And uh, I'll also show you how uh, obviously Terraform can be uh, e executed on uh, an AWS platform and uh, how, how uh, resources on AWS can be spin up uh, with, uh, with Terraforms and also integrating that with the CACD uh, as well. And in the end, uh, a parallel Drupal will get created, installed uh, with, with the whole uh, load process. So, um, infrastructure as code, have you heard of the term AAC? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, put in very simple word, uh, IAC is nothing but a um, few of the uh, you know manual um, task which is done by a system and maybe modern operation. Uh, you consolidate all that task into a tool or an application so that this can be automated. And this uh, this can also uh, be used for managing your infrastructure. Uh, also we can use that for spinning up the infrastructure. So, <clears throat> those who haven't heard the term infrastructure, infrastructure is nothing but resource which helps you to run an application. So let's take, probably let's take a case of a simple uh, PHP application. Okay? So what can you think of, uh, what are the resources that helps to run this PHP application? So, the server is required, a uh, network is required. Um, you will require Fireport, you will require a DNS uh, caching, uh, there might be load balancer involved, there can be data based involved. So, um, these are the resources which helps you to run that whole application. That, that is infrastructure. And uh, imagine you are spinning up a dev environment to, uh, for, for your team to to run this PHP application. Right. So manually you will set up all this resource and also on top of that you will have to configure this uh, you have to configure this resource so that it uh, so that your PHP application run on that particular instance right uh, you will have to you might have to configure web server right. uh, you might have to configure the database so there are one time activity that also there are some activity which is uh, which can be redundant. So these activities uh, of tasks can be put up as a code and it can operate. So uh, manual work leads to more effort, uh, can lead to high human cost, um, and also there's a chance of uh, failure. You can get all last minute surprises. Uh, you, you will always have this thing. Okay, it's supposed to work that way. It's not working in the other environment. So that kind of uh, last minute surprises can be uh, nullified if you uh, go with IAC. And uh, also think about uh, maintenance. Think about deploying a new release uh, of the application. Think about taking regular DB backups. Um, think about disaster recovery. Uh, changing network configuration. So all these are maintenance activity which is kind of 
development, uh, we'll, we'll make this, you know, uh, we'll make the job of the uh, DevOps guys better by uh, doing uh, all this in infrastructure. So that's that's about infrastructure. So think about automating all these things, and um, let's say how how easily you can deploy uh, these resources by just a click of a button or uh, by executing a uh, command. Uh, let me do a quick pause uh, here, and then I'll um, I'll show you how that's done. Um, so this is my uh, Azure. DevOps uh, dashboard. Hopefully, you can see this clearly. Um, so, I'm just uh, running a pipeline which is already configured. Uh, this is my branch. And uh, I'll get into the details later on. So, for now, I'm just running this thing and it has two stages uh, validate and apply. Uh, we'll go into that uh, later. So, what happens is by, by the time you finish applying these stages, um, here is my AWS console, and I right now I don't have anything on my uh, EC2 instance. You can see zero EC2 instance that's running. Now, once this is applied, uh, you will see the instance which is uh, created. In this. So let, let let us give that some time, and let me go back to this presentation. <coughs> so. Benefits of uh, automation is again you can now you have this all embedded in a code you can reuse that across uh, the environment right you can uh, you don't have to uh, do uh, repeated uh, tasks again and again and uh, better you can also version control this you can uh, do a branching strategy and then integrate a CI/CD along with that uh, you can document each resource exactly what that resource does. Also, you can test it. Uh, Terraform has got a uh, very good command to tear up all your resources. So once you've done testing, you can easily remove all the resources uh, if you no longer require that. Um, so I've been talking about tasks a uh, lot of time. Right? So there are three categories involved in uh, in, in AIC. Uh, one is your Infrastructure provisioning. Uh, then the other one is config, configuring your provisioning infrastructure, um, and the last one is deploying the application itself on the uh, provision and configured infrastructure. So, uh, because there are, uh, it, it's not just one phase; it's comprised of three categories. Right? So that's the reason um, it's a good rule of thumb to go with. Uh, Two or more uh, combination of tools. So here I'm using Terraforms with Ansible to, uh, to to build the whole process. So Terraform will be managing the initial uh, initial provisioning of your infrastructure, and then later on Ansible will uh, come in, and then Ansible will do the whole configuration of your uh, resource. Like it will be, uh, it will do the uh, installation of Drupal, manage the dependency of Drupal, things like that. that that's done by Ansible. So um, that brings us to Terraforms. So uh, what is Terraform? Terraform is it's an open source IAC tool. Uh, it's created by a company called HashiCorp. HashiCorp was uh, I think um, found, founded uh, back in 2012. <laughs> Um, it's started by a couple of folks uh, named Lee, uh, Mitchell and uh, Arbon, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. Um, you can uh, go, go and check their interviews, kind of cool, the, uh, the why they have started this uh, company. So uh, we have to check that video. Um, uh, Terraform uses XCL language, or HashiCorp configuration language. That is where you uh, define the resources required, and uh, that's where the users uh, tell exactly that hey, I want to, I want to spin up a VPC, or I want to spin up a Docker, right? Um, and uh, the other thing is, Terraform has uh, it's it's got a declarative program, so you don't have to write steps of 
uh, how you can spin up a resource. Instead, you just declare that and you just apply that. So it's kind of easy to understand, uh, or it's easy to get used to Terraform syntax due to that. So I've just given a higher illustration of how a Docker can be uh, installed in AWS. You create the VPC, uh, you spin up the server, and then there might be a, uh, permissions related to that. And finally, you install the Docker. Uh, so there are a couple of components uh, involved in Terraform. One is its core itself, and the other one uh, is the Terraform provider. Uh, core components uh, again has uh, two things in it. Uh, one is configuration, and the other thing is Terraform state. Uh, we'll get a bit in depth on uh, configuration. So, <clears throat> like I mentioned before, Terraform configuration language is where you um, uh, where you describe what is the infrastructure and what is the resource that you need. Here you can see um, uh, an AWS VPC. That's your uh, resource name, and that's that's a unique uh, name pro provided by the uh, provider which I'll be talking about later, and. What that does is it will it will pull that database VPC from the provider, and you have few attributes of um, you can say identifier uh, like the side of block. Um, there, there will be more uh, identifiers there, uh, and you just define those things whatever it's required within that particular VPC. So next thing is uh, Terraform state. So for you to run a Terraform, this thing, uh, this particular Terraform state is mandatory. This is where Terraform um, Terraform knows. Okay, this is the current state of my resource. This is uh, right now that resource there is zero resource in the infrastructure. So next time you run uh, the Terraform again, it will exactly uh, know how many resources and what are the resource configuration that it, uh, it needs to apply. And uh, by default, uh, Terraform state, uh, that's a uh, file name by the terraform.tf state. So this uh, file gets auto-generated uh, when you initialize Terraform. And it gets, uh, it is, it gets created on your uh, root uh, project root of Terraform. But uh, Terraform recommends not to Save this file uh, in your local because it, it might have some uh, you know private uh, information. It's just a dump of the whole uh, infrastructure. So if you have some um, private information, you might not uh, need to uh, expose that to the outside world. So the better uh, recommended way is to use Terraform Cloud. Um, there are other ways uh, using an S3 uh, at, uh, S3 bucket or uh, DynamoDB. I, I, uh, for this demo, I have used S3 bucket. We will uh, go in, in depth later on. Um, so, the next one is providers. Providers are like plugins. Uh, um, let's say you have, you want uh, to, you want to build a source from AWS program. So, AWS has got a provider. Let's say you have, you want uh, GCP resources. So, you have to mention GCP uh, provider. Um, this is again. Uh, you have uh, Terraform registry. I will show you uh, right now. Terraform has got, I think, more more than three thousand providers. If I'm right, so more than three thousand uh, providers are there. If you want to take a look at it. Uh, all the big players are there, uh, like uh, Azure, AWS, uh, Google Cloud, Kubernetes, uh, and things like that. Uh, you have SaaS, you have platform, uh, there are lots of categories where you can fill it up and then uh, check it out. Um, so this this is this provider block is mandatory. You have to define what provider uh, you need, uh, otherwise Terraform won't be knowing uh, what, uh, from where to pick the resource. So, coming to resource block, uh, resource block, it, uh, it's like 
Yeah, it's it's the same way. So uh, earlier I mentioned this particular example, like, uh, creating a database VPC. So that is your resource block. So uh, the provider implements uh, this resource block, and each uh, resource uh, has its uh, as uh, its own resource. It's a single resource type. So with one resource block, you cannot uh, define multiple resources. You can only create an AWS VPC with that resource block. If you want uh, a new resource block, you have to define the, the, the new resource in a separate block. Um, next one is uh, data source. So uh, data source is something like, uh, it's also by the way uh, implemented by uh, your provider. And uh, let's say I need uh, an Amazon image. Right. So that, that's your data provider, AWS underscore AMI. And uh, these are some special kind of resource. Uh, it's, it's declared by using data block. Now, I, once I use that, or once I define that uh, AWS AMI, I can get that particular AMI, and I can use that particular AMI into, other, into your other resource. It's something like how you uh, pass parameter to a function. So it's a similar way uh, you can do here. Um, you don't have to, uh, I think it's very interesting, you don't have to read the whole thing, but this is a uh, typical example of how uh, you build a network topology uh, in AWS. Um, so the main thing is uh, talk to um, this defined provider, and here you have some variables that you define. And then uh, you define the AWS region, and here are the resource uh, VPC and subjects and things like that. And it goes on. It depends on your architecture, uh, what are resources that you need. So uh, let's let's talk about how uh, you can uh, define variables in Terraform. So there are three ways of doing that. One is uh, input, and the other one is output and load. So input is, again, it's very similar to data. Uh, you again serve as a parameter to any Terraform resource. Uh, output is quite the opposite of that. Uh, you declare that as an output variable if you want to you know, um, see what all resource gets spin up. So at the end, you will know, OK, I've uh, spin up an EC2. I have, uh, I have a RDS instance. If you know, if you want to know exactly what uh, what variable that you can define with output variable, uh, local variable is like you assign a short uh, short name. It's, it's, it, it, the um, scope of that will be only within your um, resource, right? and you can also uh, pass this local uh, values into your resource. That's that's how uh, you declare an input variable. Uh, it's it's been, it's starting with a variable uh, block and followed by the input uh, name. You can also uh, give a default value and uh, the type of the uh, variable can be defined. It's uh, better to create uh, this or, or include all the variable in a separate Terraform files. By the way, I forgot to mention uh, Terraform has .tf file extension. So you create a Terraform file with .tf. So um, it's best. It's a good practice if you uh, create variables on a separate uh, Terraform files. <coughs> output variable uh, starts with the output uh, keyword <coughs> and followed by uh, that particular unique uh, variable name. Um, similarly, uh, local values are uh, with locals, and then uh, you give the uh, name inside inside that block. Um, now, uh, these are the basic uh, Terraform commands. Uh, now, there are more, more, uh, more commands, but uh, most of the time we'll be working with these uh, commands. <coughs> first one is, first one is uh, TF init. Uh, with, uh, then we have TF plan, apply, and destroy. So, init is where you, uh, that's when you uh, initialize the directory, and that's when all this, <coughs> what do you call it, the state file. The log file and everything gets auto generated. Uh, once you do that, 
uh, you will, uh, if you want to uh, uh, just check what on resource will be created, you will execute a Terraform plan. It's kind of a dry run uh, before you actually apply, uh, apply that. And then uh, you uh, apply, and then uh, if you want to uh, destroy or tear down all the resource, you will uh, run TF destroy. <coughs> Okay, now uh, let's uh, let's see if uh, if that pipeline that we have earlier, yeah, so that got applied. Um, we just go in depth. So it, it's got it's got uh, two stages. One is validate, and uh, the other, other one is apply. So inside apply, you have uh, something called as uh, deploy the terraform. Uh, so let's expand that. So here you have Terraform init. Um, you can see it's, uh, it's um, let me just increase the okay. Can you all see this? Yeah. Okay, okay. so um, this is initializing the packet and um, why that's uh, done is because Terraform states to be saved somewhere. It cannot be. Uh, so here I'm saving that on a uh, S3 bucket. Uh, I'll show you how that can be configured. And once that is initialized, uh, it, it, it's initializing the provider plan. So this here is uh, hashicorp slash database is uh, created. And a uh, few of the other required plugins are uh, getting added. Um, so once they init, State is done. Uh, we have plan. Um, so where is that plan? Yeah. So uh, here you will see all your resource that you have. You are going to create in your infrastructure. Getting uh, the details of that resource will be showing here. Uh, this is your Drupal instance. Uh, you have subnet. You have uh, something called as easy to profile. Uh, there, there are around uh, 17, 18 resources that gets created here. And at the end, it will show you 18 to be added, uh, 0 to be changed, and 0 to be changed. Because I'm just creating this for the first time. That's why there's nothing to change at this point. And uh, apply again, it's, uh, to, it will internally do a Terraform plan. And, and later, once that is uh, success, it, uh, it runs a Terraform plan. So this is where um, so the plan is done again. And, and then uh, these are the things that, that, that I have declared as my own. So that's that's the use of output variables. So uh, you don't get this uh, value now because you will know the value only once you uh, finish applying. Uh, this is where uh, it's creating all this resource on AWS, uh, and finally uh, you will have uh, apply complete and uh, 18 uh, resource got added here, and then you will get all the values of. Yes. Uh, required resource like the MSC, uh, <coughs> the of the instance, uh, the uh, DB instance, etc. And uh, that's so. Uh, let's just quickly uh, take a look at what other or how the files are structured. So this is my repository. Here I have uh, <coughs> the main thing uh, here to just uh, focus is. Uh, this particular file, Azure Python. So this is where I'm defining my uh, CI/CD, and you can see there are uh, stage called validate and stage called apply. Uh, and uh, the important thing here is uh, these lines. Uh, it's defining the backend service. Uh, it's also uh, defining where. Where is that particular Terraform state file getting stored? Um, so, backend services, Terraform gets started. Uh, you can create the backend service uh, from project settings. 
uh, go to service connections. Uh, I have currently I have these many. Uh, I have created uh, Terraform get started and if you go in edit you will see uh, it requires the access key ID and secret uh, secret access key. This access key ID and secret access key is coming from AWS. So that's how uh, your Azure is communicating with uh, AWS. Um, how you create this access key ID from AWS is uh, simple. You uh, go to AWS, um, go to security credentials. <coughs> There's something called as IAM uh, management uh, in um, AWS, and you have this option called access keys. So, if if you want to programmatically uh, use your uh, AWS resource uh, SDK, you can create a uh, access key, and uh, you can share that uh, with uh, with other uh, platforms. So that's how, so this access key I have uh, created and uh, I have shared that uh, in my edge uh, and it's find the region of my S3 bucket. So it's in AP South 1. Uh, that's it. And I'm uh, granting permission for all the um, The other thing is, let's go to AWS uh, C4, uh, search for S3. So here you can see my uh, already created S3 bucket. This is kind of a prerequisite. I've created this S3 bucket manually because um, there should be something uh, for uh, that state file to be uh, getting stored. And this is my Terraform get started is my S3 bucket. Uh, if you go inside that, you will see this uh, Terraform.pf state. Uh, it's a huge state file where you can see all of your all the state of the resource. Uh, right now it's I, I haven't protected this particular uh, S3 bucket but it's a good uh, uh, you de definitely should protect it this uh, so here you can see the state of the resource. Mm, it's got auto generated. Now the next time if I run the Terraform plan or apply command, I won't see 18 resources again getting to it. I will just see those few modifications which I have. It will exactly show you what are the changes. And that's coming from the uh, state file. Uh, the other thing is, let me uh, open the uh, repository tab again. <coughs> So if you would see, uh, okay, let's see that. Uh, so uh, if you go inside Terraform directory, this, these are my uh, .tf files. These are where I define uh, what resource that I require. Um, so you can, the main uh, file is my provider. So I'm uh, specifying what's the required version of Terraform that I have. On which I need. I'm specifying the backend as S3 and I'm giving the uh, S3 bucket name and also what file it should be, uh, what, what's the state of the Terraform uh, TF state uh, file it should be getting created. Uh, also, I'm giving the uh, region uh, of my AWS provider. And uh, once you do that, and uh, you also create Separate file for variables.tf. This is where I'm defining all my uh, variables required, uh, like region uh, using AP South, um, the EC2 instance type, which is T2 uh, micro, uh, and you have other things like key name and uh, IP address. So this variable can be used across my uh, Terraform files. So now um, the other important one is easy to.tf. So um, 
what's happening in this file is I'm creating a resource called AWS instance, and that is my EC2. That's my server. Uh, it's using an Amazon image called data.mi.bit2, and that's coming from that's coming from AMI.tf. So this is an example of how you can use uh, data. Um, so this is downloading an image which is already there on AWS and able to image. And that is passing in my uh, EC2 uh, instance. And also uh, the other main thing here is user data. So user data is something where uh, when you want to Configure or it's it's a one-time activity that when a server spins up, what all job you want to uh, do inside that particular server. So that's uh, that's done by user data, and user data is a, it, it's a template file which I which I've uh, added here, and uh, it's, it's called as twitch.yaml, and you can pass your required variables uh, inside of that particular twitch.yaml. If you take a look at scripts.yaml, it's inside scripts. Um, so this is uh, this is something called as cloud config. So cloud config is an it's, it's again an agent uh, where it will do all your prerequisites. Right? So when the instance is getting created, it will uh, download all these packages. Um, it will create this particular user, it will <coughs> it will uh, write a particular file, in this case a script file, uh, which is installing my Google. And the main thing is uh, Ansible. So I've talked about Ansible, right? So I'm not installing Ansible in my server. Instead, I'm pulling an already created Ansible playbook uh, from, from this uh, from this repository, and this playbook has got. I'll just open that up. <coughs> so this is a, a, a public repository. Um, if you go inside a site store canvas, what this does is it's creating these many things. Uh, it's creating CloudWatch, which is used for logging. Um, setting up PHP, it's installing Google, and uh, it's installing <coughs> web server engines. Uh, you can take a look at this uh, in depth. If you go inside the roles, uh, you will see all the tasks that's required. So the idea is uh, this particular uh, repository will be pulled by your uh, cloud in it, and the playbook site.yaml will be uh, executed on uh, instance pool. Um, you, uh, this is where the output will be stored. So all this I'm passing on to my uh, instance user data. <coughs> so um, uh, all all this I'm uh, this is my uh, scripts.yaml file, and I'm, I'm passing that scripts.yaml file to my user data. And, I'll just show you in a bit uh, how, uh, where you can see that user data uh, from AWS. Uh, the other is, yeah, so RDS is where uh, you <coughs> specify the uh, database uh, related parameters, uh, giving all the required um, mandatory values here, and uh, also the uh, subnet pool. Um, this spin up. This will spin up an RDS instance. <coughs> um, what else? So you have uh, security.tf where you create a security group, resource database security group. Uh, I'm specifying uh, its uh, both ingress and use ingress and egress. I'm creating another security group for my RDS. So, uh, that's that's how uh, you define your uh, resource inside a Terraform file. Now, 
let's uh, open my AWS console and uh, go to EC2. So <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm in not, uh, I've added this in AP South 1, which is Mumbai. Let me change the region. <clears throat> so now you can see uh, a new instance that got created and uh, which is running. Uh, if, you, if I get inside instance ID and go to actions, instance setting, edit user data, you will see exactly the user data that I have, the template that I have passed here. You see that, uh, you will see those. And, and then uh, the other thing is, um, the, the network, all, all those network that I have defined, uh, the subnet will be uh, created here. And you have uh, open two assets, uh, uh, the image that I mentioned. Uh, you also have got uh, an IAM role that I've created. This is for uh, communicating. Uh, this is how AWS communicates with its various services. So here, I'm, I'm also using CloudWatch for logging purpose. So your EC2 will have to uh, talk to your cloud. Person. Uh, my EC2 role, uh, I can, uh, I'm not going in depth into that, but uh, it has got few policies where uh, it, it gets all access to uh, cloud -based. So, um, with that said, let me open this instance. Uh, I haven't uh, added SSL for now, so HTTPS won't be working. Um, so here you can see uh, all that Google uh, instance that got created. And um, what else? Now, now if I want to again, let's say I want to destroy all this particular uh, thing. Uh, I, I don't want all this resource in my environment. I can go to pipelines. That's my pipeline. Uh, I'm running and switching it to uh, a different branch which I've created or destroyed, and I'm running that. So once this is done, I uh, I, I won't be seeing all that uh, source which I've uh, which I've shown. Now that will take quite. So that's that's about it. Uh, So a few uh, resources that I've uh, used, you can uh, um, go to registry.telecom.io uh, um, You can uh, go to hashicorp.com and then uh, see how Terraform gets installed uh, I've, I have, I've created uh, two repositories, uh, Terraform gets started and the AWS playbook for Drupal You can take a look at that um, I've tried to make it as uh, comprehensive as possible but um, just take a look at that and try it on your own. Uh, just try, try it out and uh, just get me to give me the feedback. Um, so, uh, also, I have an um, article that's uh, that's in Drupal, ashfield.com, uh, more or less talking about the same thing. So, take a look at that as well. Yep, um, some enhancements I'm planning to do. Uh, first thing is to use uh, Terraform Cloud. Um, the other thing is uh, to create Terraform modules that uh, you might have already noticed I'm using a lot of hard-coded uh, variable uh, values so I'm using Azure, uh, I want to use Azure uh, Keyword uh, a better uh, thing for, for that um, Infrastructure enhancements like uh, load balancer, uh, adding uh, uh, auto-scaling group, adding SSL okay, so all those enhancements also I'm uh, trying to do for the next yeah, That's it, thank you Any questions?
I have a lot of questions. So time is <laughs> yeah, you can uh, reach out to me uh, later if you have any any sort of questions uh, related to this. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.